My name is Stuart. This is the Ask Stuart Hour. And this is a program we do for our boot campers, our group boot campers. But whenever we have a special guest in the house, I always make it public so that all travel professionals far and wide can join us. So if you're here, welcome. If you're watching this after the fact, welcome. So here's the deal. I got to let you guys know right off the bat. We had all the best intentions to broadcast uh, the camera where we have our special guests so you could see their faces. But for some strange reason, technology is not cooperating. And look at me. I'm smiling because it's all okay. So I'm going to go around the room and I'm going to ask them to introduce themselves so you believe me that they're really here. And we even have uh, somebody on the Palace team here. We'll start with you. Jacqueline, let's start with you. Tell us who you are, what you do, and where you are right now. Thank you, Stuart. And good morning or good afternoon to everyone. I'm Jacqueline Kruger with Palace Resorts and LeBlanc Spa Resorts. And um, in the western part of the good old USA as your business development manager. And um, I exist only, my entire team, because of you. So thank you so much, you amazing travel professionals. And thank you, Stuart. And um, I am currently, even though I may cover the western USA, I actually currently am in Cancun because where else would you want to be but Mexico? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, I didn't realize that you're at your, so you're attending a conference right now in Cancun and which resort are you at? No, I'm not at one of ours because oh. this is the, the, the host hotel is not one of ours this time around. Okay. But it's the Romance <laughs> Travel Forum, which there are many people who are just like your audience today who sell loads of Greeks and loads of romance and loads of dreams and wishes are fulfilled. Cool. Got it. All right. Well, thank you for taking time out of your duties attending the conference. And now let's switch it over to David and Yannette. Uh, Yannette, let's start with you. Would you be kind enough uh, mm -hmm. to introduce yourself? Tell us who you are and what you do and where you are right now. Hello, everyone. I am Janet. I am based in Cancun as well. And I am part of the planning team at Palace Resorts. The pl planning team. So do you specialize in wedding planning, Janet? Exactly. I am specialized in the wedding planning. So basically, um, our job is just guide the brides to plan everything on time and flowers, menus, decor, vendors, all that kind of stuff. Okay. So you, you, you take it from a, a, a dream to a reality. You make it happen. You are the coordinator. You're the planner. I'm the planner. I put everything in order, and then we have the on-site coordinators to make it real. Terrific. Excellent. Okay, and we have one more special guest with us. David, would you please introduce yourself? Tell us who you are, what you do, and where you are. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Stuart. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is David. I'm also part of, of the weddings department at Palace Resort and LeBlanc. Um, I'm in the sales team, so basically I'm I'm the first contact of all our brides and all our travel agents who want to uh, inquire about weddings, uh, check availability for a date. So I'm the beginning of the process. Um, I check availability for the date and time the bride wants at the resort she wants, and we start uh, moving forward with booking the date. Um, I also help uh, all our clients with booking the rooms, checking availability with inventory staff and making a room block for the guests so we can guarantee every, uh, availability for all the groups. And so basically, I will be in charge of helping you with confirming the wedding and then uh, introducing you to uh, Yannette or another one of our wedding planners so you can start working on the fun stuff like the flowers, cake, and everything. <laughs> okay. So so, so what I'm hearing is, and, and let's make sure we're, I'm in the right order here. Um, the Oh, by the way, travel professionals, now is your chance. You, you want to type in a question, you go ahead and start. I, I do have some questions that were already sent in that we're going to address. If you have stuff you want to ask, stuff you want to share, please go ahead and do it. And you guys know that if you want us to hear your beautiful voice, just let me know uh, that you'd like me to unmute your microphone, and it will be my pleasure to do so. So uh, 
one of you, uh, perhaps either David or Yannette, or David, let's let's work backwards now. Let's start with you. What is the sequence of events? Just just to kind of give us a 50,000 foot view, the sequence of events. So the, the uh, travel professional has a, a uh, destination wedding group they'd like to, to, to book. Uh, just tell, tell us the sequence of events uh, of all the people they're going to touch and talk to and, and sort of, can you give us a summary of that? Sure, absolutely. Um, they're going to speak with three different people in total okay. during the entire process. Um, the first one would be one of our sales agents. So that would be me, for example. Um, I will be in charge of helping them checking the availability for the date, uh, going through the inclusions of all the wedding packages, depending on what the couples has in mind, what they want to have, which kind of events, so we can check that all the locations are available and everything is, is good to move forward. So this is the first step. Uh, I'm going to help them with the second step also, which is uh, confirming the room block for the group at the resort. So again, checking availability for the rooms, which categories they want, if they want garden view, ocean view, ocean front, any kind of room they want. Mm -hmm. And once we get those two steps confirmed, um, they're going to uh, be introduced to uh, Yannette, for example, one of our wedding planners. And this is when they start planning really all the events. So if they want a cocktail reception, if they want a rehearsal dinner, if they want a brunch for the day after the wedding, everything will be planned with the wedding planner. And the, the third person they will be in contact with would be 30 days prior to the wedding, before okay. the couples arrive at the resort, they will be introduced with a, an on-site wedding coordinator. So this is when they review all the details of all has been planned during the year or year and a half since the book, and they go over all the details and, and check that everything is correct, everything is good to go, and if they want to add some items, remove some items, this mm -hmm. is when they when they start working on all those details. Yep. Got it. That was beautiful. You really laid it out very, very well for me. I appreciate that. And, and of course, the final person is the on-site coordinator. So I just want to let you guys all know, and, and all the agents on right now, that and agents do share please if you've been to uh any resort or of course in particular any of the palace resorts if you've seen these weddings taking place or if you've escorted and been a part of it i was just down for the group travel sales summit with the third one with the uh, with Nexion that they that i did for them and uh was at the grand lucky me and <laughs> there were uh we, we we walked, which is quite a walk, from on the beach, on the, the from the Grand all the way across uh, Moon Palace, and there were multiple weddings going on, and we saw Indian weddings and all, all kinds of different attire and uh, um, diff different setups and so forth. So it was really cool to observe and to see everything going on, David. One more question to you, then I'm going to go to Yannette. The question for you is, do you recommend the travel agent go there, escort, be a part of it to work with the group coordinator, or is your group coordinator perfectly uh, sufficient to do all the work? Because that's a big question we always have here. I'm a big proponent of agents escorting their group. This is different because they were assigned a group coordinator. Tell us what you think about that. Um, we, it's, I don't think it's necessary, but uh, as you mentioned, some agents uh, really want to get involved in, in the wedding planning and in the wedding process. So right. it's really up to the agent to decide. Uh, we can really take care of everything. Uh, we have a very experienced staff at the resort, so mm -hmm. don't worry, we're going to take good care of the bride and the couple, but if you want to escort them, that's perfectly fine. We understand that you want to get involved, that you like to be involved, so that's right. okay. Okay. All right, good. That's good. So it's not a definitive yes or no, it's up to the agent to decide, hey, yes. do I need to be there or not? And sometimes the bride and groom may say, listen, I, I'd like you to be there, so that's good. They can make that decision. Um I have, uh, Janet, let, Janet, let's go to you now. You had mentioned to me uh, before we, we started the program, because um, I, I, one of the things, agents, that I love to do is ask these our guests, all right, be before we turn it on, 
What do you wish you could say to the agent? Something they're doing right and congratulate something doing wrong. You want them to do better. Something that they're forgetting or missing out on. And in it, you had referenced something about the deposit payments, the sort of the sequence of events. And this is critical because if they miss these deadlines, then it becomes troubling. Would you pull us into that? Because you said there's, uh, you had told me there's a 15% deposit required when when a service is ordered. Hey, give us an example of that and tell us how that works so agents know how to operate perfectly. Okay, thank you. Well, uh, after David or any of the sales team introduces us, uh, basically what we do is um, we schedule a conference call with the bride. We um, normally um, like to be just in contact with the bride. I mean, we can always keep and copy the travel agent but sometimes there's a lot of misunderstanding during the planning mm -hmm. because sometimes um the bride and the group didn't get the proper information and uh, we don't know if it's because there's like so many weddings going on with the travel agent or something like that so we uh notice that most of the times that we are in contact with the travel agent and we never have contact with the bride and groom mm -hmm. uh, it creates a lot of misunderstanding so I know sometimes that the travel agent part of the services is uh, make sure that um, we are doing a great job and we are taking a good care of the clients. But for us, it's really important just to see everything directly with the bride and the groom. Uh, that way we can get better their ideas um, from, I mean, from then I know, uh, as I said, there are um, a good channel for us to be in contact, but just to have the couple involved as well, for us, uh, it is better. So a travel agent can be in copy, and of course, she can uh, ask us any questions that they want, that they have. Uh, so basically, after the conference call with the bride and the groom, mm -hmm. we share uh, our catalogs for like the core, photographer, menus everything so from that we start the planning process mm -hmm. and um they just start like sending us ideas of what they want if they like i mean changing colors all those kind of things mm -hmm. so i will say that after back and forth with like four or three months with so many decisions colors and changes um normally after that um that time it's when the bride and groom are like um more uh they have more decisions mm -hmm. so they say you know what i would like the uh four hours photographer so what they say is uh what they have to do sorry is that send us the half mm -hmm. uh payment of the package if the package costs i don't know four thousand dollars they need okay. to send a thousand and that is for the vendor to block the date and the time okay okay uh, but Go ahead, go ahead, sir. Yeah, yeah. Would you give us an example of a package of two different packages. In, in case we have an agent on, they've never done a destination wedding group, or maybe you have, but just want to get an idea because you mentioned package. Just give us yes. an idea of what, of what that is. Sure. We have different packages for photography. We have wedding collections as well, or wedding packages. Uh, we have different uh, uh, things. So we start, for example, for the photographer we start with a two hours photographer package okay. and uh, we have different photographers we have four photographers mm -hmm. and you can um, view their information in the links that we provide mm -hmm. uh, all of them has the same cost it's just basically that the bride and the groom are able to choose um, whatever uh, works better for them and for for the um for the photography that they that they do so mm -hmm. and as well for the wedding collections we do have some wedding collections we have five wedding collections something like that mm -hmm. and um most of the most of the time to be honest uh the weddings are customized so that's mm -hmm. why when you came to uh to the well and stay at the grand you see a different kind of weddings because most of them are customized right okay that's good uh I appreciate that. And so you uh, you feel, let me just re recap that. Uh, one important thing you said is that having direct communication with the bride and groom is very important to you, yes? It is correct. 
Okay. You know, it's interesting, Jacqueline, because in, in our, you know, in our business working with, with the agents, normally, you know, agents uh, by default are sort of resistant naturally to having the, the, the consumer and the, uh, the brand, the hotel, the plant, you know, talk direct, uh, because, you know, fear of stealing my customers, this kind of stuff. But this is very different, right, Jacqueline? This, this is critical to complete the loop because this is such a, a, a high touch, a high service product to deliver. It's so highly specialized. So do you find agents resistant or are the agents, Jacqueline, are they more, oh no, go ahead. You guys have the conversation. I'll stay in the loop, but you guys direct connect. Uh, yeah, that's a great point. There, sometimes, depending upon if an agent is not familiar with working with us in the past, right. um, or, is, or does not have a uh, a someone in their office that has done work with us in the past, and they're out of the habits of the other brands that they've been working with, and perhaps for I'm sure amazing experiences that were maybe so amazing, they yeah. are very hesitant. But once they understand that. Seven days a week, our amazing team is there for them, and they can have their special valued couple, bride and groom, or whoever is on behalf of the bride and groom making all the decisions. They have access to our team there, and it's in support of the agent's work. So therefore, Mm -hmm. all the travel agent can really do is just focus on making sure everyone has called in, has Mm -hmm. secured their rooms with them, um, his, who has a passport or who forgot they needed a passport, you know, they're free to take care of all the bride and groom's guests um, as far as their travel plans and their rooms. And the bride and groom is free to just know that that part is secure and that they can do all the planning and all, like Yannette was saying, it could be months of different combinations and color mm-hmm. schemes and they're mm-hmm. pursuing, do I want to add a harpist? Do I want to add mariachi band? Do I want to add an extra cocktail party? Because as you'll get into it, we have so many benefits that they can accrue based on how many rooms are in the one room's contract. The ones. Right. So I do find a long-winded answer, sorry, <laughs> but I do right. find that at first, based on their experience not working with us and perhaps with another brand mm-hmm. for, for very sure valid reasons, they are hesitant. But once they understand that our team is there in support of them, and they can basically either put their seatbelt on and go along for the ride with all the whipsy do um, flower schemes and and decor schemes and music themes if they want, or they can just leave it up to our experts in Cancun <laughs> to handle it, and they can just take care of all the different needs of the traveling guests for the wedding group. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if I can David. add something, sir. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, re- it's really important. I mean, for the planning process, it's really important that the bride is in, the, in direct contact with the couple. Uh, on the first step of the booking process, when mm-hmm. the wedding is not booked yet, uh, we completely understand that the travel agent must be involved because I don't know the couple. The couple has more trust on the travel agent than on me because mm-hmm. they know who they are and they already saw them. So it's really important that the, the travel agent gets involved in the booking process. Mm-hmm. Um, but once they get in contact with the wedding planner, so with Yannette, uh, everything is booked already. So we already signed contract. We already signed a group agreement for the rooms and everything. Right. And the travel agents are listed on those contracts. So okay. basically, okay. we are not able to steal the clients when they are the planning planning process because everything is booked already. Right. Yeah. Okay. So th- this makes perfect sense. What I'm hearing, friends, uh, a- a prof- agent professionals, and, and, and please chime in here. Again, I see a lot of comments coming in. Some of you are already doing destination weddings, and you understand this, but if you're here because you're thinking of getting into the business, because you keep hearing more and more and more about it, because it is growing, right, Jacqueline? The the amount of destination weddings is growing like crazy. Then, Absolutely. Uh, then, then uh, and and if you haven't tried, or haven't promoted yourself, or become an expert, you've gotten a lot more education uh, on it. Just know that you you don't need to know everything. If this is very much a team effort, and I love this. So agents, you do what you do best. Get those agents in. Talk. Uh, get the clients in. Uh, talk to them. Understand what they need, where they go. Put them at the at the perfect resort for them. And once you make the booking, you know, speak to David and his team. Make that connection. Then it's so it just gets.
the baton sort of gets passed down to the, the team. You're involved, but you have to trust the team. And that'll make life so much easier because they're the experts in what they do too. Mm -hmm. uh, ja Jacqueline, you had mentioned something to me, and I'm going to bring this back for a second, everybody, that uh, when you communicate with these different people, with the wedding planner, let's just say with, with, when you're getting, you know, as they say, the devil's in the detail, that you guys, David and Yannette and your whole team, you guys get so many emails, even you, Jacqueline, and your team from agents and then you ask questions or you reference agents, you reference, uh, let's say your, your destiny wedding group, but you, but you don't, you don't see specifically which wedding it is, which couple it is, what the booking number is, when the wedding date is. So Jacqueline, let me make sure I'm restating what you sh shared with me, please agents in the subject line, reference the, the group booking number, Reference the name of the bride and groom, reference the date, something. And again, repeat it in the body before you start asking questions or making changes. Because it's only going to uh, end up making the, the communication flow go that much slower when Jacqueline and David and Yannette and the team have to go back and say, wait a minute, who are you? What's the wedding? Did, did, I, did I enunciate that, yeah. enunciate that correctly? Yes, you did. You articulated that with perfection, as you do with everything. Um, and I thank you for that. And I'm going to tell you the reason that that would, why an agent, a travel professional, would be reaching out to one of my team members or okay. myself. Um, most of the time, it's because the bride and groom perhaps are busy with other details and they've mm -hmm. pinpointed the mother or the sister. Hey, can you contact my coordinator and just verify this or can you get daddy to sign this form and send it back to them you know mm -hmm. we, we have to go I have to go do a test or I have to go to a work meeting you know out of town and then next thing you know they're contacting the travel agent because they don't have an email address or they don't have a, a place to send back a form or a credit card payment or you know one of those crucial deadlines right. and so I get involved because they're saying, hey, Jacqueline, I need to find out who's the coordinator, but they never mention the <laughs> month of the wedding, the, right. the resort that they're going to or anything. So just yeah. even something simple as me helping them get in touch with the coordinator so that they can streamline it and meet the deadline of yeah. a deposit due or just simply perhaps somebody's email was hijacked, you know, and now they need to use the room's email address and they want to... Um, or they want to provide a new one, but they forget who the coordinator is because they have no access to their email inbox now because it was hijacked. So in the subject line, I just, or in the body of the email, someone can just give me, you know, it's the Johnson and Valdez wedding at uh, Beach Palace for 2019 May. I can yeah. easily go ahead and get David or Yannette or anyone of the team members and say, um, who's the coordinator? I need to get a hold of them because here's a payment that you need. Right. Yeah, actually, uh, on the, when when the wedding planner introduces herself to the couple uh, or the agent, uh, on the subject line, it's always mentioned the date of the wedding, the couple's last names, and the wedding booking number. So uh, also, the wedding planner usually mentioned on the first email that please uh, keep the same subject line and do respond to all at all the emails so everything everybody can be still be in the loop. And so that's really easy that way to find a wedding. Uh, just consider that we have at Palace Resort, we do over 2,000 weddings a year. So it's really hard for us if you, if you tell us who is the wedding coordinator for uh, Josh and Patty. Oh, I'm sorry, I have no idea. <laughs> mm -hmm. So just give us as much information as possible so we can get back to you as soon as possible with the correct information. Okay. This is great because, you know, this is simple stuff, but sometimes we just get busy and we don't realize it. And I think this is just basic, a good tip for best efficiency. Mm -hmm. uh, it just, as you use the word streamline, and, and, and I love that word. Um, I want to go now to, uh, oh, yeah, the th this is a question, and this, this may be a toughie, but I get this question a lot. Agents, you tell me if you get, if, uh, if you still experience this, and, and this is not specifically to the Palace Resort brand, but that Uncle Uncle Joey over here thinks he's gonna, you know, beat the system and and not book through the agent, not book into the room block, and try to get a rate direct and book direct and stuff, 
you know, I, I, and I've come up with my own uh, best practices tips on that, but I want to hear it from you guys. Who, who wants to start? And it could be just one of you. I'm just curious, how do we allay the, 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 the fears of the, the, the bride and groom and the agent that somebody in the family, somebody in the family is actually going to contemplate doing this? Well, um, it's, it's always important to, to, to let the couples know that they need to send constant reminders to, to, to the guest mm -hmm. uh, for the way of booking the rooms, um, that if they don't book through the group or through the agent, they will not be considered part of the wedding group. Maybe that would be additional fee uh, um, uh, for that. So it's this is the most important thing. Uh, sometimes the couples... Or just send their invitation cards like uh, nine months prior to the wedding and they just wait. No, mm -hmm. it's really important to send reminders constantly to the mm -hmm. guests. Don't assume that your guests remember how to book. Uh, they, they received an email nine months ago, but they received thousands of, of emails in then, so they probably don't have that email anymore. But mm -hmm. just send that to them in seven days and that would be perfect. Yeah. I like that. That's, that's a great tip. Uh, while the we, we think, you know, we send a note out, we tell everybody, oh, we're so excited, we're getting married here, save the date, but there's got to be constant reminders because the, the more space, the more time that goes by, then the consumer, because at the end of the day, they're a consumer, uh, just may get fidgety, may pick up the phone and call, may start looking online, mm -hmm. but but it's important to keep reminding them the details of, of how to book your room and all the stuff will be coming uh, to set that stage, and, and my agents who are in group boot camp, uh, they understand us through the, because we have something called a group launch sequence, and we, we could do, we, we, friends, we need to do the same practices in group launch sequence for, for any group, including destination wedding, and to make sure that we are very thorough with the information and that we take control of it. This is important. And one of the ways we take control of the sale is telling people when we're going to do things, how we're going to do things. Uh, on this day, we're going to book, but right now you can't book yet, uh, but you're going to attend these information sessions. And that's where, agents, you explain how it's going to work. Because I would imagine so many consumers, so many people may have never done a destination wedding. And we have, we have to assume they've never done it. They don't know how it works. Uh, I want to welcome Nancy in. She says hello from Maine. Welcome, Nancy. Jennifer uh, gives us a great tip. She says, I think it's best to explain the, the whole thing. The whole thing is a partnership to the bride and groom, too. So it's one thing, Jacqueline, we were just talking that the agent needs to uh, accept that, that team, part, the whole partnership, that there's a flow a sequence of events that occurs, but also that the bride and groom are fully aware of the process as well, right? So that they, they're not kept in the dark. And again, here's an opportunity agents for you to take control to say, okay, bride and groom, here's how it's going to go down. Here's a sequence of events. Here's the first stage. Here's the second stage. And now we're going to, you're going to have your own personal uh, wedding planner, like you net and then when you get there you're going to have somebody who's going to meet you there who's going to work with you every step of the way right have i captured that right so and and Jen, jennifer i appreciate you sharing that that the bride and groom really need to know and be comfortable so they're not just making phone calls and selling sending emails willy-nilly did i sum that up right you did that perfect i think uh Stuart. and in the in the feedback just like is being shared here now We've come up with what we call a wedding process cheat sheet, uh, for lack of a better term. That's just basically what it is. And that is available for all the agents on our agent-only website, or, of course, any of my business development managers on my team can um, provide that. And that can be shared, or perhaps, you know, some of the agencies have already come up with their own, um, with their own branding. But basically, mm -hmm. we've come up with it, and it's a nice little cheat sheet, and it gives the timeline of at this point, you know, a year out, six months out, nine months out, 60 days out, 30 days out, little right. bullet points of what to look out for, when you should be submitting a custom cake design in, or when you should be looking right. to have secured your DJ or photographer by, mm -hmm. um, or, or room counts. That's very important, too. They can translate whatever the tour operator contract 
has in mind for attrition and utilization and deadlines for, you know, when to reduce or, or any other uh, payments that are due. Okay. Uh, there's, uh, so I have a two-part question. First part is for, for you, Jacqueline, then we're going to go to Yannette for, for, for the second answer. Part one is, is how early should ideally a bride and groom start the process and make the booking, you know, work with the agents? That's part one to that question. Part two, Yannette, if you would follow up with at what point, how, how many days or how many months before, how many months before uh, should, w will you begin that process of starting the planning? So you go first, Jacqueline. I, I would say that the answer could pretty much be almost the same for both questions, but I'll let Yannette, because she, this is her, her, her wheelhouse, I guess, as you say, this mm -hmm. is her expertise. Uh, but as soon as they would like to start planning, um, go ahead and get secure the rooms with your preferred tour operator, you know, or, or if they, however they choose to book the rooms, mm -hmm. um, as, as far in advance as they wish. I mean, the earlier that they're committed, isn't that better for everyone that the earlier that the guests start committing and like David was suggesting, you know, sending out reminders, reminders, yeah. if they would like to start planning for January of 2020 wedding, go for it. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. And, and then, Yannette, when, Give us a date, or does it happen right away after it's booked, or is there a certain is there a protocol how how uh, what when you begin the planning process with them? Uh, well, actually, we start uh, as soon as we introduce by any by David or any of the sales team. So as soon as um, we've been introduced with the uh, with the couple, we start with the planning process. We don't. Uh, I know like some other resorts, they start like six or five months before the wedding, we don't. So the sooner, the better for us. Whenever the, the bride and the groom feel comfortable to start planning, we're okay. ready for them. Yeah, okay, that, that, that's good because then there's no hard and fast rule. Basically, let's, let's have the conversation as soon as possible. Basically, you can never start early enough to get all Correct. the details in play. Yes. I was down did I tell you I was at the grant? <laughs> Lucky me. And uh, and my wife was with me. Kimberly was with me. Jacqueline, I don't know if you know that, but finally, finally, uh, Kimberly was able to travel uh, and, and enjoy a palace resort with me. Though we did have a family group at, at Moon Palace, Jamaica, a couple of years ago, right after it opened. We were sitting in the Mexican restaurant at the grant, and we noticed there was a, a young couple at an adjacent table, and they they were talking about their wedding and what they liked and how this and how it would work, this kind of stuff. I, I, I was tempted to ask them, but I didn't. <laughs> uh, if they were, if they were sort of on a site inspection. So uh, David, do you ever have uh, uh, consumers, uh, bride and grooms come down? Is there such thing or do they just book a vacation and kind of check it out? But David, we're losing your we're losing your volume. Start again. I'm sorry. Is it better now? Yes, better. Okay. Yeah, uh, we have two different type of couples. We have what we call the walk-in site inspection. Uh, people that are just uh, here on vacation at the resort, and after seeing the resort, they like it and they say, "Well, why not get married here?" Mm -hmm. So they just get close to the wedding office and they ask for a site visit. So we have one of the on-site wedding coordinators show them the locations and tell them a little bit about the wedding process and everything like this. Mm -hmm. Or the other couples that contact us prior to uh, visit the resort, um, they, they just we just help them scheduling an appointment at the resort. We go, uh, we meet them, uh, we show them all the locations, and uh, basically we they can decide uh, after the visit if they want to book the wedding or not. Okay. And we also have a promotion and a, a preview of Paradise promotion. Um, we can, uh, it's one time a month, uh, usually the last Friday of each month. Uh, we can provide the couple with a preferential rate for two nights stay at the resort. They can come down, they attend the preview of Paradise events. Uh, during this event, they can meet with the team, with the wedding planner, with all the vendors we have for photography, uh, video, DJ, um, decor, and they also have food tasting, they have cake tasting, so they, they, they get to enjoy everything and, and have a better idea of what the wedding looks 
would look like and what we are able to do at the resort. Mm -hmm. And if after the visit, they decide to confirm the wedding with us, uh, okay. the amount they have paid for the two nights is credited back to their wedding account. So you can use it with the wedding planner. Wow. wow. I never knew that. That's very important information, David. Thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. That's great. I love it. So agents, I hope you're, you're soaking that in, taking that in. Uh, and maybe you guys knew this before I knew it, but uh, I, I know certainly for corporate meetings and incentives, uh, there are programs like that and certainly for destination weddings as well. I'm going to read what Nancy shared here. I'm no wedding specialist. I've catered weddings, but I've never been married. I did, however, help a bride with a destination wedding. The bride was amazing and set up her own save the date website. Awesome. And linked and she, Nancy, linked the booking sequence with the website. Uh, we chose together the resort and I helped her with air transfers hotel uh, with pe for people anywhere from three to seven days. And I went down to the resort for three days prior to the bride's arrival. I was there when they arrived. And, and, and so she left the next day. So she sort of went down, make sure things were groovy and went home. I passed the bride over to the resort's wedding planner, made commission on the sale too. Again, not my specialty, but the savvy bride and the resort sales team made me look good. So that's a glowing uh, recommendation from Nancy that it's doable. It's in your wheelhouse, as Jacqueline said before, that you can do this kind of business. It's not that hard. And especially knowing you've got a team like the team we're talking to here at Palace, that you could do it. You could do it as well. Hey, Jacqueline, I want to come back to you for a second because uh, we, we had a dialogue before and I said to you, Jacqueline, what's that one thing, that one thing you wish you could tell all the agents at one time that you, you see sometimes they forget to do. And it's about the commission, collecting commission. So I'm going to paraphrase and then you sprinkle in that make sure I haven't missed anything. So agents, listen, make sure you claim your wedding commission because you earn commission on the wedding contract and the wedding department, like the, the incredible folks we're talking to now who are in Cancun right now, David and Yannette, they don't deal with the, with the commissions. And, and so you have to claim it and your commission is based on the package naturally, naturally, and your pro specialist level. So, so make sure you've submitted the requirements. So, uh, well, you know what, Jacqueline, you can say it better than me. Go ahead. Tell, tell the agents, remind them what they need to do. This is awesome. Thanks, Stuart. I mean, I told you before, I don't mind playing Santa Claus. It's actually a lot of fun <laughs> to surprise people. And, and I'm like, hey, um, you didn't claim your commission on the such and such wedding. How yeah. come? Don't you right. want that amazing $6,850 or, you know, $7,500 commission? And they're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> so essentially you're making commission. Um, the weddings team from the sales to the planning is, is working directly with the couple and you're making commission and the commission scale begins at 15%. Mm -hmm. It could be 18% or it could go up to 20%. It just depends on your um, how much your um, your pro specialist level is, how high your crown level is. Mm -hmm. It could be bronze, silver, gold, or platinum. And of course, um, yeah, don't let that sit there unclaimed. And the weddings team can provide you with the current up-to-date form that needs to be filled in so you can submit it. But unless I run a report or request a report for all unclaimed commissions, mm -hmm. it's amazing how many people forget that detail. And that's your, your hard-earned client, and that's your hard-earned commission. Um, we're not talking about rooms contract commission we're from your tour operator or if you did it with us direct we're talking about the wedding contract <laughs> so if they're booking a certain collection or if they're adding extra oh lovely flowers or a beautiful cake there's commissions on that and please don't let that go unclaimed <laughs> yeah so this is very important we when I say we on behalf of the travel agent community we're used to earning uh, perhaps just on the on the on the rooms, but in this case, it's it's a whole package, and there's earnings opportunity on it all, and agents will need to advocate just to make sure to check in, make sure you you get get your money that you've earned. So <laughs> that's important. Hey, I just want to remind everybody that on May 24th we're going to gather again for the next Ask Stewart Hour, and guess who's guess who the special guest is. Me. It's just me. 
it's just me and you guys. This one is a, a boot camp exclusive, naturally. It's just us kids, us friends. So we'll see you May 24th at 10 a.m. Central for that. In any case, uh, we have opened this up to not only our boot campers, but to any agent in the community who wanted to come in and learn or share and, and ask questions uh, about the destination wedding business. And I'm thrilled to have uh, a, a great group of three guests. And if you're wondering why you can't see them and you're tired of looking at me, I'm sorry. I don't know what happened. We were supposed to have the camera working. Their camera's working down there in Cancun, David and Yannette. They're in Cancun. And for some reason, what are you going to do? You know, technology. You can't live with it. You can't live without it. So, um, Yannette, let me come to you and let's talk about the that that middle stage, the planning process. Um, do you g give give us a, a tip, a word of wisdom, or how about something that is really cool, really beautiful, really special? Not just the feature, but the benefit. Something that you love when the bride and groom chooses that really elevates the experience. I I know that you didn't know this question was coming, but. I love to hear something that maybe I don't know about. Agents don't know and bride and grooms wouldn't know, but you know is really great. Fireworks. Fireworks. Yes. We love that part. I mean, we can, we see it like almost every day, but we love it. That's the wow factor that the couple uh, can give it to their guests and also for them. And the pictures with the fireworks as a background, mm -hmm. they look awesome. So I will say fireworks okay. are the best. Okay. I like it. I like it a lot. That sounds beautiful. Yeah. Um, David, I want to come to you and ask a question that uh, Phil had sent in. And frankly, uh, Jacqueline, you can chime in on this too. But I, I promised Phil that I was going to ask this because, as we know, Palace Resorts, uh, Moon Palace, um, it, it's, 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 a, it's uh, I don't know how to put it, multi-purpose resort where you come down spend a week spend two weeks or you can be uh you can be sort of be a member if you will so david do you ever get this question and how do you respond to it if somebody says oh wait a minute you know am i going to be pulled into a meeting and this kind of stuff like you know how does that stop stuff work and jacqueline you know i know this question comes up as well uh for you and obviously you guys have the right answer. So I want to hear it from you guys to put Phil's mind at ease that guests who are, who are not owners, if you will, and, and I may be using the wrong, wrong words, that the, the, the bride and groom and their guests are just going to have a great time. And you know what I mean? And there's no issue there. But I, I want to hear it from, from David, if you want to take this on first. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, obviously, I... Uh Almost all the resort here we have a um, like membership program like a timeshare vacational club. Right. Um, for weddings, uh, it's a little different. We know that the bride and groom and all the family and friends are here only for the wedding. We don't want to bother them with that. So all the reservations we have under the group are codified as wedding group, okay. and we won't send any invitations or have them assist a meeting or spend like two or three hours on one day during the vacation or during the planning uh, for members of a wedding group. So don't worry about that. They will not be inviting and they don't have to attend any meeting. Okay. Nice and simple. There you go. Jacqueline, you good with that? Anything you want to add or that, that's just the way it goes down? Uh, no, that's, that's fantastic what David just said. And I also wanted to just elaborate, uh, add a little extra detail. Um, and I would say, because sometimes it's perhaps not a destination wedding, perhaps it is just honeymooners or, right. again, just a social leisure group. Mm -hmm. But um, I do find that if there ever was someone that comes to me and says, oh, someone went into a meeting, I can, first of all, in eight years, I can count on one hand, yeah. less, it's less than on one hand, how many fingers I have, how many times this mm -hmm. has come up. Um, but the other detail to add is, on all of the tour operator um, documentation, whether it's e-docs or you print them out for your clients, mm -hmm. and everyone can tell you, if they stop and talk to people at the airport, <laughs> they're going to end up probably <laughs> confirmed in some kind of a meeting. But when they come on property, it, if they've already made it to the property, they're probably not going to end up in a meeting because I've seen 
this is when it's happened. The few times that I can count on one hand that it's happened is mm -hmm. because A, the people that were attending the wedding group or just in general, vacationers or honeymooners, they right. stop to talk to people at the airport. We all know who these people are. They right. smile and they claim they can help, but they can't do anything for them. Right. Their transportation is outside physically in the fresh air. It is not indoors arranged. They've mm -hmm. already arranged, you know, their ground transfers. So if they, they, they've either stopped and talked to someone and got themselves mm -hmm. committed into something, mm -hmm. or they wandered into the actual office, which is mm -hmm. not right there easy to find in any of our lobbies. Um, mm -hmm. they, they wandered into an office because perhaps they saw smiling people that had nobody at their desk and they right. saw, you know, little pastries <laughs> and, and little treats and <laughs> it's a glass door and they walked in and they saw, you know, brochures on different tours and they said, oh, what's mm -hmm. this about? And, you know, and then they engaged in a conversation. But Stuart, that's honestly, yeah. on one hand, less than those fingers, I can count how many times it's happened and it's because of the, one of those two reasons. Okay. I appreciate you both taking this on. I know Phil couldn't attend live, but I know, Phil, you're listening now uh, either on your treadmill or driving your car or late at night having some tea or something like that. So there we go. I appreciate that. Uh, David, uh, the things that can go terribly wrong, like not having the requirements or, or, or uh, you know, th th things that need to be done before the process even starts – uh, is, is this, am I addressing this question to you? What, what are the key things that the agent needs to tell a bride and groom or you to make sure they have be, in order to uh, have a ceremony in order for this to happen, for them to officially be married in Cancun? Okay. Um, as you know, at the resort, we can have uh, three types of ceremonies, uh, symbolic ceremonies, legal ceremonies, and Catholic ceremonies. Uh, for symbolic and Catholic, there are not much requirements. Uh, the most important thing would be for the legal wedding. If they want to get legally married at the resort, it's important to consider that they need to arrive three business days prior. We don't count Saturday on Sunday. So if they want to get married on a Monday, they need to be there, but at least Wednesday. Okay? That's really important. Yes. And also, once the ceremony is confirmed, the date and time is secured, it's really important to have a group contract done. This is the only way to get the group benefits and to have the complementary benefits like free rooms, free upgrades, uh, free private events like the reception, the cocktail. Everything is based on the contract they will sign. So you will always have couples that don't want to put down a deposit to secure a room block. Um, have them understand that this is really important so they can get all the perks that we have to offer. Right. Be the most important thing. That's important. Very important, everybody. Make a note there in case you didn't know that, how many days they need to be there prior in order, in order for it to occur. Thank you, David, for illuminating us. I, I just want to make sure I mention this because I happen to be Frank Corzo's biggest fan. Frank is the vice president of sales for Palace. And we we not only do a lot of work together, but I consider us friends. And I know he would not be happy if I didn't mention. And I normally don't give. I mean, this is a really, I try to make it a commercial-free boot camp. Uh, although I always invite the suppliers, the brands that I love the most, that I adore the most, that I think are the most agent-friendly. That's why you guys are here today. But, but I have to mention Cash is king. So I just got to give it a plug. Jacqueline, in 60 seconds or less, what's Cash is king? Make sure these guys know it and, and take advantage. Cash is king. Uh, claim your commission uh, at palaceproagents.com, our agent-only website. You can find the area to uh, enter a booking. And essentially, for every room sold, you're getting bonus commission on it. So this is either it could be a... Seven nights stay, which is a hundred. Seven nights or longer is a hundred dollars per room. Mm -hmm. Five to six nights is seventy-five dollars per room, and even a three to four night stay is fifty dollars per room. And for every tenth room that travels in the same calendar year, you get a separate two fifty bonus. And there's even a tab there that when you log in, um, all you have to do is log in and register. And um, we will we can help you if you need any extra help in registering and fulfilling all the requirements. But essentially, every room you're selling. You can do it comfortably through all your preferred tour operators or direct however you wish to do it. But every room counts, 
including on a group. Uh, so, for example, a wedding group up to the 25th room. So if it was a seven night stay, 25 rooms, mm -hmm. the bonus commission would be $3,000. And Stuart, the best part is there's no checks. It's a Visa reloadable uh, debit card. Good at anywhere Ooh. point of sale. Ooh. Yeah, you can go on Amazon or you can go to the gas station or the grocery store or you can go online and book your air because in addition to Cash is King, you also earn complimentary nights. Um, it's called Ready, Sell, Stay. So for every room sold, not only do you get some. Well, I am, I am uh, duly impressed. yourself and a companion. Yeah, I'm duly impressed. And hey, listen, agents, with that, with that little preloaded Visa card, you could take me out for lunch. That's what I'm thinking. You could take yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm um, agreeing with this. I, I want to ask a question because I know you guys have added a new property to your portfolio and uh, agents, you're saying, well, you know, why Stuart, you know, why, why do you, why are you fans of these guys? Well, not only have been to, you know, moon, moon palace, Jamaica, but moon palace, Cancun and the grand multiple times. But I also had the incredible, amazing, good fortune to uh, vacation at La Blanc twice. So, I, I mean, it's like that's the end of the sentence. I don't need to say anything else. But uh, I don't know if any one of you or Jacqueline or, or David or you're not, uh, if, if you've been there, seen it, if you could just give us a little snapshot of what that resort looks like and and bring bring us uh, the destination wedding talk into that conversation so we understand how that's a good opportunity for brides and grooms there as well. Okay. Um, I didn't have the opportunity yet to, to be at the Leblanc Los Cabos. Um, I have seen really nice pictures of all the locations we have there. Um, ceremonies on the beach are just amazing. Uh, we also have rooftop locations uh, for, for the ceremony and the reception. Uh, as you know, the sunset there are, are really amazing. So the same packages we have for Palace Resorts also applies at the Leblanc Los Cabos. So this is exactly the same process and the same benefits. Um, so go ahead and maybe Jacqueline, you already have been to Los Cabos. So maybe you can give us a little well feedback or your impressions on that. Of course, of course. Yes, Stuart um, and David, I've been there um, multiple times and I actually am doing a series of webinars too as well to, um, and I'm highlighting uh, some of the venues, some of the uh, locations that you can have a ceremony or receptions. It is three buildings and it's in the corridor. It's 30, 35 minutes from the, um, from the airport. We're about 15 minutes from downtown Cabo San Lucas. It's of course adult only, and it is three structures, three buildings, shaped like a U, if you will. And uh, center stage, um, Roberto Elias, and I love saying his name, Francois. I'm probably mispronouncing it. By oh, we lost your audio. Come on back. Come on back. Come back, Jacqueline. Come back. All right. David, you're not, you can't hear her, right? It's not no, just me? No, I cannot hear her. No. All right. All right. Jacqueline, I know you'll be back with us. So, hey, for some reason, there you go. There's this technology thing. So while, while Jacqueline's either getting cell, cell service or whatever, I'm just, I want to let you know, David, and you know, yet, yet, yet that um, while my, my daughter, she's getting married in late September, she, she, she's having a destination wedding, but it's here in the States. It's on Cape Cod, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but, but, of course, her honeymoon. Of course, her honeymoon is going to be at La Blanc Los Cabos. Well, so. you're still on time. You're still on time to change the venue and come to Paris. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I want to ask this question: uh, Is is it frequent, or is it uh, is it always? Uh, let's just say that whoever has, if they have the destination wedding at the resort, the guests go home and they they have their honeymoon there as well. I mean, I don't want to make that assumption, but I believe that would be the case. Well, we have 10 resorts. Uh -huh. So uh, if they have the wedding at the Moon Palace, with mm -hmm. one of the benefits we have, depending on the final room production of the group, is that we give them free rooms. So that would be also an option. Maybe if they have 
the wedding at the Moon Palace, which is a, a kids-friendly resort with all the friends and family. Uh, after the wedding, they can move to another resort, maybe the Sun Palace, or maybe the Leblanc, or maybe Isla Mujeres, which are adult-only resort. So they can spend a few days and honeymoon before getting back home. Right. Yep. No, that makes perfect sense. Um, and I, we don't hear Jacqueline yet, so maybe we, we her her line just dropped out. I'm so sorry, Jacqueline. I'm such a big fan of you. I'm so grateful you're here, but this technology stuff, what, what are you going to do? It's crazy. Oh, sorry. Are you back? I'm so sorry. Where did <laughs> I get cut off? I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't well, you You were describing the venues, the distance from the airport, uh, just minutes from uh, downtown Cabo San Lucas. Uh, so you were sort of getting into the, the specifics of the resort. Okay. There are just amazing locations to do um, the ceremonies or the receptions. And like David mentioned, there is a rooftop. Um, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, there are three, it's three buildings and on one of the jetted out longer buildings, it's mm -hmm. exquisite with the background of the sunsets and there is even a beautiful tourist location and on the pool level, I, I like to think of it as Beverly Hills, um, there's a line of palm trees on either side and you can have in between that facing the ocean, um, a ceremony, and then have your reception there all around the pool area. And it's exquisite with the lighting, um, which is something, of course, that would go into the wedding contract and the commission of bull, mm -hmm. <laughs> all the DJ and the entertainment and the lighting and all the extras. Um, don't forget about that commission. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, essentially, I do a series of webinars. They just started on featuring Los Cabos, but I have amazing team members, my business fellow mm -hmm. managers, and they're located throughout the country so that we can get... Um, any one of our travel partners here joining us today on mm -hmm. eFAM or they can join in on one of my webinars and they can actually see or we can provide access um, if they need any of the drone video clips that I have to an mm -hmm. overview of the resort. Um, and also the weddings team, of course, has beautiful images to help um, describe and, and help uh, secure and anything that's needed, any of the tools. Mm -hmm. you can help them with. But it's 373 suites, all adults only. Um, I used to say when we made LeBlanc Cancun, we broke the mold, but yeah. now it has a baby sister, but the baby right. sister's actually bigger because <laughs> wow. it's 373 feet, all ocean facing. so there's restaurants <laughs> and the way. Very cool. Oh, we're losing you again. Oh, my goodness. All right, well, so, uh, you just came there back. You go. There you go. We, we lost this the last few words. I, I'm going to see if we got you back now. We've got two minutes left, and I'm going to go around the room, and I'm going to ask you each. But, Jacqueline, I have a specific question for you. But when I come to you, David, and you, Yannette, if you would just give us in, in 60 seconds, just leave us with uh, something inspirational, something informational, something that the agents can use and apply and, and uh, build their uh, destination wedding business, have more satisfied clients, brides and grooms. So that's, that's going to be my final question for you guys, 60 seconds each. But Jacqueline, 60 seconds or less, actually 45 seconds. Uh, your best yeah. tip for an agent to get into the destination wedding business if they're not already in it. Get together with your business development manager and we'll be your, your secret weapon, if you will, and be your biggest support and biggest fan. Um, and EDGE, remember EDGE, it's, it's an acronym for Exceptional Destination Groups and Events. And we have amazing group EDGE programs um, for all of the bonuses that they, they can earn. Cool. All right, excellent. Yannette, you're on. Give us that one big takeaway. I don't hear you. Oh, no. <laughs> she, she's thinking of, of the best impersonal quote. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I would say uh, don't be afraid of, of, of booking a wedding at a resort, even if, you, if you're not a wedding specialist. Um, the team we have here, we have 16 wedding planners. We are 10 in the sales process. We have about 20 wedding coordinators. Uh, we have a lot of experience. As I mentioned, we, we do over 2,000 weddings a year. So don't worry about that. We will take good care of the couples. Um, always stay in the loop and always clarify every question or uh, any concern the couple have so we can avoid any confusion and keep the bride and the, and the couples very happy. Yeah. I love it. That's great. And, and I want to add my two cents here, agents. Let's think big picture for a second. Just imagine, you know, uh, agents these days, uh, there's this big thing. Uh, how do we deal with millennials and, 
you know, it's so hard and blah, blah, blah. Now, of course, they may not be millennials getting married. They could be uh, the, the, the next generation. Uh, but at the end of the day, could you imagine, friends, if you may already be doing this, uh, booking their destination wedding, which leads to their honeymoon. You will have, if you do an extraordinary job, if you give them loyalty grade service, you have clients for life. And all of their young friends and family will come to you too. So what a, what a, just an individually great opportunity and so fulfilling, but the opportunity to grow your business exponentially is there too. Thank you, Jacqueline. Thank you, David. Thank you, Yannette. I appreciate you being here. Thank you. Thank you. All right, it is time to say goodbye. Agents, I want to thank you all for being here, participating. I hope you found this beneficial and helpful, inspirational, educational, and now go back and apply it so you have that transformation come true.